They're nature's tireless workers. No wonder they call them busy. But you've probably never considered just how busy bees really are. Well, consider this. These humble little insects are responsible for pollinating much of the food we eat. Without them, we'd starve. And this is where it gets scary. Because right now, a tiny parasite is threatening to wipe out our bees. It's already destroyed bee populations around the world. And now, it's on our doorstep in New Zealand. But all is not lost. You see, there's one man who's fighting back. A dedicated scientist, almost as busy as the bees themselves. Look at them, listen to them. Bees never stop. Busy is the only way to describe them. Ah, look at that. Wow. That's full of honey. Could you eat that now? Oh, yeah. yeah. So enthusiastic is Dr Dennis Anderson about his bees, he convinced me to risk the pain of a sting. No kidding, aren't you? I, no, 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 no. You've just got to have a little bit of faith. For the pleasure of pure honey. Just, just nice and easy. Yep. Can't get fresher than that. No, no, that's beautiful. But mm. bees give us so much more than honey. They're critical to our very survival, providing a $100 billion a year service to world agriculture by fertilising our crops as they go about their business collecting pollen. All these individuals we're looking at here, they're all workers, and so they've got chores. But as a bee pathologist, Dennis Anderson warns, these bees face a catastrophic threat from a nasty tick-like parasite called Varroa destructor. This is the most dangerous threat that we have of bees around the world. What mm. does he do? Why is he so dangerous? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a blood sucker. Mm -hmm. it's a, it sucks the blood of the bees, basically, and as it's doing so, it transmits viruses. Varroa has spread insidiously into every major country except Australia. Now it's on our doorstep in New Zealand, and the great fear is it's only a matter of time before we're invaded. We're an island in this world of Varroa, and it just hasn't got here yet. As you watch this spread from country to country to country, as a scientist with a passion for bees, what were you thinking? I guess when I saw it spreading, I was, everybody was quite dismayed. I mean, how were we going to deal with this problem? Standing here being buzzed by all these angry bees, it's taking all my willpower not to run out of here. But whether you love or loathe bees, it's important to know that they are really crucial little creatures. The thinking goes that if all the bees were to disappear, it would only take five years before we'd all starve. If we didn't have bees, the world would be in serious trouble. Our crop yields would drop away. Um, there'd be mass starvation everywhere. Um, we just can't do without bees. So we should care about bees then? We should care terribly about honeybees. And across the Tasman, I soon discover why. Dennis has brought me here to New Zealand to see Varroa wreak its devastation. So that should Oh, have there's cut. another mite coming out. Ugh. Yuck. The Varroa parasite jumps onto bees, hitching a ride into the hive. Look, it's gone, oh. you see? It's on the back. Look, it's on, on the, the back, back of the bee. Of the bee. That's, That's how fast. quick it was, yeah. They're so opportunistic, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're perfectly adapted to the bee. Once in the hive, the mites drop into the cells to breed and feed on the baby bees, slowly weakening and killing the entire colony. They are nasty little things. Oh, yeah. They're nasty and they're too close for comfort. Like Australia, New Zealand was proudly free of Varroa, but then, eight years ago, the mites somehow breached strict quarantine to invade almost every hive in the North Island. It's very nearly destroyed beekeepers like Russell Berry. 
So as a beekeeper, when you see your hives have the Varroa mite, what is your reaction? The reaction when we first got Varroa mite was absolutely devastating. The first week you're so depressed and every beekeeper in New Zealand is the same way. It, it's very serious depression that you see Varroa mite eating your bees. Russell and his bees produce the most honey in New Zealand, but the cost of continuing to do so has almost crippled his company. He now spends more than half a million dollars a year on pesticides, trying to keep the mite under control, hoping the chemicals will continue to work. If the Varroa mite becomes resistant to the chemicals you use, what happens to the bee population in this country? It dies. Simple as that. So, in Australia, we have a lot to lose if Varroa strikes. At risk is our healthy bee population, our agricultural industry, and our treasured chemical-free honey. I think Australia's got the best, uh, the best honey in the world. Not just because I'm an Australian, even, and I love our honey, uh, but um, when you eat that honey, you know that it's, it's as pure as you're ever going to get honey, and it's clean. Is there anything we can do to stop Varroa coming here? It's just a matter of time before one of those swarms swarms off and that's here. It sounds like a miracle it's not here already. You said it. Mm. It's a matter of when, not if. The prospect of Varroa in Australia is so catastrophic because of the job the bees do. Bees are one of nature's most efficient work gangs and for Dennis, one of the most intriguing. You know, they're social, they're like us. And uh, like us, they've got behaviours and diseases and they do things and there's 80,000 odd individuals in that. It's like a city in a box. In this city, there are defender bees who, like air traffic controllers, guide the bees back to the hive after a day amongst the flowers. And so then the bees just home straight in and come straight in at the entrance. Mm -hmm. They're the beacons. Come they're on the home. Beacon. That's yeah. right. But they, they also protect. There are the drones, the stingless males who do nothing but eat and breed. They have these areas which they call drone congregation areas. <laughs> all the boys hang out. You know? <laughs> so they it's hold... their pub, right? Yeah, it's sort of like, well... <laughs> I don't know, it's like sex, there's nothing else. You know? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not no, much booze going not on Not much there. booze, a lot of sex, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, the females do all the work. They're even known as worker bees. They're the nurses, cleaners and pollen collectors, and they can all sting. And then there's the bee that it's all about, the queen bee, the only bee in the hive that can lay eggs. She's laying something like, what, 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a day? About 2,000 eggs a day, yeah. Because our bees are still Varroa free, they're in hot demand overseas where bee populations have been decimated. The millions of bees on this pallet are about to fly long distance to the United States to help boost the dwindling numbers there. Terry Brown sends three loads of Australian bees each week. How would you describe the work these bees are off to do? These bees are off to do a job that in the US they need desperately, otherwise they're not going to have food to put on their plates. Simple as that. That's a pretty big statement, they won't have any food on their plates. Bees are a part of the human race's surviving. They, the people just don't realise how, much, how important they are for the pollination industry, which we have to have. These bees may deserve to fly first class, but they'll spend the next 15 hours in the cargo hold on their way to their new home. When the Australian bees get to the US, they're brought here to California to help their American cousins. This is the biggest bee pollination operation in the world. Scattered amongst the hundreds of thousands of flowering almond trees, there are 50 billion bees busy at work. It's quite a sight, the almond orchards of California, and the bees only have a couple of weeks while the trees flower to get to work. 
the bee will come along and actually bounce from blossom to blossom. And in the process, they rub pollen off on this female stem, which makes the pollination process. Which means that there will be a, a nut. nut. There will be an almond there. Yes. The wind blow, pollen in the right spot. Shad Sullivan has been in the bee business since he was a kid. If you didn't have bees, what would this orchard look like? This orchard wouldn't exist. He's no, never seen it so bad. Varroa has wiped out up to 80% of the country's hives, and the very existence of many of the nuts, vegetables and fruits we take for granted is now under threat. There are simply not the local bees to pollinate them. Now you've got quite a few Australian bees here. Yes, we do. Are they good little workers? They're very good workers. One of the best that we found so far um, bringing these bees in is about the only thing that's kept a lot of beekeepers alive so far. It's a year-round, 24-hour-a-day operation. Bees are trucked across the states from orchard to orchard, crop to crop, to pollinate. But it's an expensive exercise. Varroa mites have seen the cost of pollination skyrocket, a cost Americans pay at the supermarket. How lucky do you think we are in Australia? you're the only place that doesn't have them now and your your country is blessed the need to keep your country clean and clear of these is crucial um, the price of everything your food will price will double it's a big responsibility but dr dennis anderson is the one man standing between varroa and our bees here in his CSIRO lab in Canberra, he's working on gene technology which he hopes will turn off the signal that tells the mites to breed when they're in the beehive. So even if the parasites make it to Australia, they're doomed. He's horribly underfunded and success is at least five years away. But we can't afford for Dennis not to get it right, nor can the bees. Do you feel like you're doing important work? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm dealing with one of the most important animals on the planet. You know, it, it, uh, it contributes to every one of our lives. Uh, in fact, the, the saying is that one in every three mouthfuls of food we eat, we can, in some ways, bees have contributed to that. So um, if I'm trying to keep bees healthy, then uh, I'm keeping you healthy too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.